how banks create money by making loans. The vast majority of money takes the form of deposits that individuals and businesses have left with commercial banks rather than the paper money issued by central banks. However, where these bank deposits come from is often misunderstood. A common belief is that banks simply act as intermediaries. They accept deposits from society's savers and they lend the same money to society's borrowers. This would mean that bank deposits are created by the decision of consumers to save, with banks then lending out these savings or deposits to borrowers. This is a useful shorthand way to think about how banks operate and how a bank's balance sheet is comprised, or to better understand commercial banks' role in maturity transformation, for example. But it's not true. The actual relationship is the inverse of that usually assumed. Commercial banks decide how much they can profitably lend in the market, and then that lending activity creates new bank deposits. We can understand this better by thinking of a real-world example. Now, imagine that you went today to your own bank and you took out a two-year personal loan for £1,000. Assuming the bank is happy with your credit rating and assuming that you and your bank can agree on an appropriate interest rate, then the deal will be struck and the loan will be concluded in short order. Two things will now follow. And these follow simultaneously. Firstly, the bank will record a loan of £1,000 that you owe and the bank will then credit your current account with £1,000. At that precise moment, new money has been created. Now let's look at this transaction from the perspective of the bank's balance sheet. Here's the bank's balance sheet the moment before you walked into the branch. Now at the agreement of the loan, the bank's asset base increases by 1,000 in recognition of the financial asset that has been created. This is the 1,000 you have agreed to repay at the end of the two-year time. And secondly, in the act of crediting your current account, the bank has also created a corresponding liability of 1,000. The bank's balance sheet has therefore grown on each side by £1,000, and the supply of money in society has increased by that £1,000. So to re-express this more technically, we can say that new broad money has been created in the form of bank deposits without there being any change in the amount of base money in the economy, because no new paper money has been printed, and nor have any extra central bank reserves been created. In reverse, paying off a bank loan, a mortgage or credit card, actually destroys money. When the time comes for you to repay the £1,000 loan, then the money you transfer to the bank is written off against the asset the bank previously held. Now, another common belief is that central banks determine the quantity of loans and deposits in the economy by controlling the amount of base money i.e. central bank reserves and banknotes. But as you can see from our example, this is not true, at least in an open economy. 